said a bad guy. Yeah, chico. Yeah, chico. You talking to the bad guy. Tooth picking your eye. I'm that guy. Hey, y'all. Yeah. Something happened to me. Something happened to you, okay? Man, what's going on, everybody, man? We're back, man. We took a little brief break. But uh, I got a very special guest here, man. Introduce yourself, man. Man, Rod Davis. It's Gulfport High, baby. <laughs> Absolutely, man. One of the good boy greats, USM legend, man. Uh, first off, how we started off, right, man. We give everybody they flowers when they come on Smackin' World, man. I mean, I'm, first of all, man, appreciate you for being one of those role models, big brother. Uh, for me, we grew up in the same neighborhood in Good Point in Surrey City, man. Stayed around the corner, had a lot of battles in, your, uh, in front of your mom and your dad's house, man. Uh, just appreciate you what you just done, kind of laid that, that ground for us to, to uh, follow. You know, follow your steps and, and how to be an athlete, man, on and off the field. Uh, made some great plays back in the day, man. A lot of people, we got to let everybody remind everybody who Rod Davis was, man. So, hopefully in this interview, man, I hope, you know, you reach back down in that memory lane and, and kind of give us that, that idea of what you was back in the day, man. Man, I, I appreciate you for having me, man. Uh, from afar, you know, I've been looking at your, uh, your your show and different stuff, man. You're doing great things down here. Y'all doing great things down here, man. So I'm just happy to be a part. Uh, you know, it right now it's about always giving back. You know, uh, it was somebody always ahead of me, my years, just like it was you. You know, my years, it was D. Hall, man, Demetrius Hall. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. who used to give back and then reach back and kind of, you know, put me up on this wing and help yeah. me grow and, and things like that. So, you know, it's always good to give back, brother. Man, absolutely, man. That's, that's kind of start off in the beginning, man. That's what I want to do. I start off, man. That's that's you know, we went to, we went to East Ward, man. You know, we played. Coach Freeman was our coach back in the day. I was that little kid with the, the knee pads on the shins. Me and Joe Walker. I mean, I, I couldn't play the game, but I could practice with y'all. Uh, man, y'all never mean, took y'all didn't take no. Pity with me. Y'all used to steal runs over and pick up and run and basketball and all that. Kind of go jogging memory a little bit on when you played at Eastwood back in the day. Man, it was uh, really good. You know, it started off with uh, Coach Freeman, man. <laughs> you know, I remember I didn't start playing football the second grade. He came and asked my mom to for, for allow me to play. And uh, I've been playing basketball with him, but second grade was the first year I played football. And I enjoyed it. Uh, it was great. You know, but he worked our tail off, man. We yep. used to go to the beach and just run and run and run in that yep. sand, man. He just kind of instilled that that work ethic in all of us at an early age, man. And, you know, far as, you know, just youth, you was a, the, the, the young fish, you know yep. what I mean? We I got beat up with Sunuk and Leroy and all of them boys, yep. both O's and, 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 and those guys. So when it was your turn, you know, you know, I know it ain't a thing you know, politically correct name, but it, it was a haze period that yeah. you had to go through it, man. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, you had to go through it, and, and it made us tough. Yeah, you absolutely. know, we all had to do it, so, you know, my time was to get on you, you know what I mean? Yep. And we had fun by doing it, but that that that's, that that builds a tradition, that builds a culture, that builds something that people can, from the outside can't take away, that we'll always take with us and, and kind of instill and build up something that, uh, you know, Sears City, you know what I'm saying, uh, we always have. Absolutely, man. I caught a couple bowls from, from, from Ryan back in the day. Locked the wind out of me one time, man. And then, you know, people were rolling their ankle over there on that look. We talked about that off the camera, man. It's a look. You roll, I rolled my ankle a couple times on, on the end of that street where the gold was at your, at your uh, house, man. But those were great times, man. Just, you know, really kind of just molded me. Like, it, I never was scared in the game because I felt like, you know, when we played, Y'all in those pickup games and football and basketball, like, which that's a lost art now. Like, kids not doing it in neighborhoods anymore. But, man, I never felt scared when I played guys my age because I was like, man, I'm playing with Ryan. I played with Ryan and Seneca and Lee and all those guys. Freeman, and I never was scared. So, that right there was real huge for you. It's just the same as you, like Bobo and Bobby Mills and all them cats, man. They used to rough y'all up. So, those, those were great times to kind of set the standard for you, man. So, that's kind of like jump off to when you went to Central Junior High. That's what it was called when you went. Mm -hmm. Central Junior High, man, what was your experience with that moment where you were like, man, I can really be good at football and basketball? What was that moment you had? Man, it really wasn't a moment there. You know, I remember my seventh grade year, you know, I wanted to go out to play quarterback. And uh, they had uh, another guy named Derek Enroll. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, Coach Jones, my first year there, Coach Jones had just retired from coaching middle school. So Coach Ricky Floyd was our head coach. 
and uh, he was tough on us and, and stuff. And so that year they moved me to tight end, and I I freaking hated tight end, you know what I mean? Because we were mostly blocking, but you know I just kept at it, you know, just like I always. I tell people all the time, man. Coach people, I thought I was a basketball player my whole uh, whole life. You know, we grew up in in. Uh, at the time, back in the day, his name was Chris Jackson, but right. Mac I do Raouf, you know right. what I'm saying, grew up in the same neighborhood as him. And, you know, to hear the stories of him putting up a thousand, ten thousand shots a day, right. you know, I used to go to the center and try to do that. So I thought I was a basketball player. Right. Uh, so, but, you know, I kept at it playing football because, you know, that's what we did. Our friends did it and, you know, had a, a solid career there at Gulfport, you know, when, I mean, at, at Central, when I went there, it was from seventh to ninth grade. So I was there seventh to ninth grade, man. You know, uh, honing my skills, like I said, with Ricky Floyd and and and, um, and stuff like that. So it wasn't a time I, I don't think at, at, at Central Junior High that I thought that that, that I was the guy. Okay, man, that's news to me because you know I always thought highly of y'all anyway because. I just looked up to y'all, so mm. I didn't know this. Like, that's why we bring people on the show to kind of tell us their journey in their eyes and, and, and enlighten us how it was as far as till you got to that level where you felt like you was the guy. Yeah. So, uh, all right, so that's that was news. Okay, so now, you know, you go through ninth, seven, eight, and ninth. Now you go up to the high school, school of champions, good boy high school. So talk about that, that transition because the game is way more faster now. You're in high school level. What, what, how was that for you? Man, I'll never forget, you know, we bust over there uh, my ninth grade year, my freshman year. I'm still in ninth grade, but, you know, we're doing the spring with with the high school. Mm-hmm. And uh, i never forget, I tell the kids all the, all the time now, man, if you're scared, that's when you're going to get hurt. And I'm playing safety uh, at the time. And Steve Brownlee is catch a ball. He was a tight end from uh, Gaston Point. Godly Steve would be. <laughs> he catch a ball, man, and I'm so scared, bro. There's no way I can move out of his way. So I just got to go up there and hit him. And he ran me over, completely over. Boom, I hit the ground. I'm embarrassed. It was a, it was one of those plays that Coach Quavis blew it up after. He blew it up, yeah. called everybody up. Yeah. And he called everybody up. And I get up, and my arm is hanging. And I'm like, man, what the? So I get on the knee. I had to pick up this to put my arm right here. So I'm like, yeah. So we break it down and everything. And I'm like, man. So I go in the mirror and I take off my shoulder pads and man, my freaking collarbone, I can touch it with my chin almost. It is out. It is out. And oh, and I freak out. Uh, I can't even think the trainer. Ross. 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 He, he, he passed away. Ross passed away. Really? Yeah, yeah I didn't know if you knew that, but Ross passed man. away a couple years ago. Yeah. I, I, Ross I, was out there. That was a trainer though. Yeah, that, that was our trainer. Ross, 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 that was a Ross, so I run in there, you know, you know, I make a long story, I break my collarbone, and then I'm like, I missed the whole spring, and then, so now I'm behind the eight ball. Uh, but, you know, uh, Coach Hardy, Coach Hardy was a DB coach, and you know what I'm saying, he, 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 he stuck to have me hard with me. Uh, so, my 10th grade year, I started cornerback, man, and I uh, had a good summer, had a, 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 a good, a, a solid 10th grade year, because most of the time, you know, 10th graders don't start at, at, I mean, you don't start as a, as a sophomore, but I I just wanted to follow in the footsteps of Seneca and Leroy, because they started as a 10th grader, so right. I was like, this is what I'm gonna be. The next year, you know, I went on, they changed the defense, we was a cover two that year. The next year, we went to a, a kind of a quarters defense with a safety, so they moved me to safety. Right. At the same time, like, and I tell everybody this, I'm, I'm coached now, at, at, in high school, I was slow. I never ran anything under a five flat, but I was a smart football player, so I knew coverages and I knew how to make sure I'm getting deep, you know what I mean? So, junior year, it's a solid year, it's okay year, it's the last game of the season. We're playing our rival, Biloxi, Lorenzo Diamond. Lorenzo Diamond uh, goes, he had three catches for a buck, I think a buck 28, a buck 30, with two touchdowns and just killed me. Yep. You know what I'm saying? They got us in a matchup where I couldn't hide. He couldn't hide. Couldn't hide I couldn't I couldn't hide it. The next week we playing Brandon in the playoffs. I'm sitting on the bench. I'm riding the pine. Yep. Uh, we beat Brandon as Jared Norwood team. We beat Brandon. Next week we playing Moss Point. You know, Bobby Gardner came in and took my place. Next week I'm like, well Bobby had broke his wrist. 
So I'm like, well, his wrist is good enough to throw the ball next week. I'm going to be back in my starting position. Next week playing Mossborn, I'm on the bench again. I'm riding the pine. So, again, I was like, man, okay, it's no worry. I'm a basketball player anyway. <laughs> so that happened. Goes through that year. Uh, basketball season come. You know, we got a really good team. Yeah. Really good team, man. Uh, we, 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 we were state championship. Seneca Taylor, one of the best players in the whole world. Right. Uh, holiday Classic, he goes up, he breaks his leg. Bah! I mean, one of the worst breaks I ever seen somebody have. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh my goodness, right. basketball's going over. Make a long story short, we man, we made it to the state championship. Yeah. We made it to the, uh, the the big house that year, man. It's just a bunch of guys just bonded together. Next year we come out, it's time to play football. Coach Quaves come to me, we want to move you to linebacker. Coach, I ain't playing the linebacker. <laughs> You, 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 you hit that and uh, it's like, nah, we need you at linebacker. I was like, coach, nah, I ain't, this ain't for me. I'm going to basketball. So, you know what I'm saying? I said, man, I, I, I'm done with football. So I go in there and go meet with Coach Caldwell and uh, say, Coach Caldwell, you always say you want the football players here at the beginning of the basketball season. Uh, football ain't working out. I'm coming here. I'm ready to rock and roll. Mm -hmm. and he said, come on in my office and uh, – he said, uh, do you want to play at the next level? I said, yes, sir, for sure I want to play at the next level. He said, in basketball, the best thing you can get is a D4. And I was like, D4, okay. Whatever, I'm playing at the next level. It don't matter. And he said, son, ain't no such thing as a D4. <laughs> and I'm like, and I looked at him, I'm in shock. Because, like, I'm naive just like anybody. I'm thinking I'm a really, really good basketball hooper. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, bro, you 5 and level. <laughs> Playing power for you know what I'm saying? You tough as nails, but you know what I'm saying? Yes. You, you, it ain't translating, you know what I'm saying, to the next level. Right. It's like, take your butt back out there to uh, football, man. And I, I promise, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have the career I had without Coach Caldwell because many coaches, especially nowadays, would just say, come on, and not even worry about just be selfish. But he wasn't. He knew my goal was to make it at the next level, and uh, he helped me out doing that. And uh, I'm tremendously fond. Uh, Joffrey Strickland was playing right beside me. He's way better than I am, but he's a baller. He's a baller, but yeah. you know he's taking on blocks, getting off blocks, making tackles. I'm running around, guys, but uh, making plays. So, but still in all, you know, I, I, I earned, I, I grew a little bit. Uh, I earned a scholarship to go to Southern Miss, but I still, like I said, I still don't think, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. I'm where I needed to be. You know what I mean. So. I earned that scholarship. I'm very thankful. Me and Bobby signed a scholarship to go to USM. Right, 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 man. So, like, man, you had a, a great career. It was up and down. You had some humble pie. Oh yeah, it. man. But you played so great. You're seen here. You get picked for the Mississippi Alabama game, which I remember. I never forget watching that game. Mississippi Alabama game used to come on Fox Sports South, and we we was at home watching the game, man. And you balled out, man. Can you kind of like talk about that a little bit? All right, now that, now you start talking about when I thought I could really play ball. Right. Uh, Mississippi Air game, I never forget going to the game. We had a running back. It was it was viewed as the All Stars versus the All American. Mississippi, we had a bunch of All Stars. We had a bunch of guys that was All State. Alabama had All Americans. Had some <laughs> of the top guys. You know they didn't have ESPN 300 all that yeah, back yeah, in my yeah, day, yeah. but they had some of the best players in the in the country. All we had was uh, Dante Walker. Dante Walker was the uh, the number three running back coming out, and uh, and I in that game, man, I ended up with a a, a fumble recovery for a touchdown, return the fumble for a touchdown. I picked the ball off, and I had seven tackles, and that's the first time I realized, I'm like, man, I might be all right. I might be all right. Uh, so it was pretty good, you know. Uh, the only difference then is that we played the All Star game in the summer. Mm -hmm. So we played in the summertime. You know, like, yeah, I, like, I like how it is now because right after the season they get to play. But you know, we had months. You got to train on your own and all of that. So, uh, but you know, I had a good time. You know, met some guys. And what's crazy is I tell anybody, Will Hall at Southern Miss was uh, our quarterback. Man, I didn't know that. Yeah, Will Hall was our quarterback. So that's where our first relationship met with him. You know, him and his dad at, at the Mississippi Alley game. Man, that's what's up. I didn't realize Coach Hall was up there, man. The yeah. The QB, man. But I remember when you ran and picked up that, that uh, ball and you ran it. We was all in the house. That's cool. <laughs> and they interviewed you after the game. I mean, they interviewed you, like, after you lived yeah. it. So you were like, man, 
I just gotta make a play, baby. You know? Make a play, man. I just, <laughs> just gotta make a play, man. I do remember that, man. And that's I, dope. I say this, I was disappointed that I didn't get MVP. Man, I, he was, I, he's I, a boss I, too. Ball I was, out. man. Uh, they gave me Dante. Uh, you know, I think he set a uh, Mississippi high record for yeah. rushing. He was but, uh, he, he was a true, uh, he was a true fit running back. But uh, that's the first time I was like, man, I, I might yeah. be alright. So how did like like I know we kind of fast forward to it. How did you get? Who was you? Like, who was you interested in going to school? Like what school show interest your senior year? My senior year, I, it is uh, the the three schools, and this is why you know people may what it is what it is. This is why I, I say old. Oh, instead of saying old Miss, I say old Piss. With Seneca being there and being recruited, yeah. I never got a letter or phone call from old Miss. That's and I crazy. never knew what was the reason. But Mississippi, the three schools were Mississippi State, Tulane, and Southern Miss. Uh, Mississippi State, I'll tell you this, Mississippi State wanted me to stop playing uh, basketball because they said I was losing too much weight. Because that's back in the uh, Joe, Joe Lee Dunn. Dunn. Joe that's when Dunn. they had them big, them yeah, big yeah, linebackers, yeah. Yeah. those big guys, and they wanted me to stop playing. And I was like, nah, I'm not, definitely not going to stop. I might stop playing football before I yeah. stop playing basketball. <laughs> I don't understand this. Yeah, no, so. So they, so they kind of got off of me. And then it was USM Tulane. And I was like, man, Tulane, huh? you know what I mean? So now it's going to be USM, you know, Bobby, me and Bobby's yeah, going to go there. And then I never forget, you know, it's signing day. Coach Quavis come in and said, uh, hey, Rob, Mississippi State. Because they, they was on me, they was on me, and then they just stopped. When I didn't play, what's the name? And then the day, the signing day, uh, they came in and called me. Hey, Rob, we want to sign you to a scholarship. That's crazy. And I was like, nah, man, I'm already committed. I ain't with that, which, you know what I'm saying? If you didn't want me yesterday, don't want me now. You know what I mean? And that's just how I am. Like, like I'm, I'm committed. I'm gone forward. So I said, nah, tell the state I'm, I'm good. I'm going to sign with USM. So yeah. that's how I ended up at USM. Man, that's what's up, man. That, that's a beautiful story. Man. So now your first year there, man, was, you, was it a cultural shock for you? Because the game real fast now. It's some bombs. Everybody, everybody got the same level as you are, not better. What was that first time, like that first game? I mean, the first, not the first game, the first time you actually stepped your foot on campus at Habsburg that you were saying? Well, like I said, we played an all-star game in June. Gotcha. So I came to campus with a whole lot of confidence. I had a, and I was like, man, I'm finna, I'm finna take me a position. I'm finna take me a position. Then when I got on that field, yeah. hold on. Like <laughs> they fast, you know what I'm saying? They fast, fast, you know what I'm saying? They taking on blocks, yeah. running, you know what I'm saying? Linebackers running like dang DBs and stuff like that. So I was, it, it was, it was a shock how big and how strong and how fast they were. So you know, uh, I ended up having a red shirt. That one, that that's a '99 year, one of the best years uh, Southern Miss had. You know what I'm saying? Ever, especially for his defense. I think that defense of uh, that '99 group. Had on that defense, our 11 stars, I think seven, six or seven went on to play NFL ball, man. It, it, it was, Scott was on that Yes, defense. you know what I'm saying? Days Tom, it, it, it was just, it was just some dogs on that thing, man. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, so now I got to deal with being red shirt. So I ain't know how that, I ain't know how to respond to that. And to be all honest, man, uh, my grades suffered. Because football kept me in check because I was like, okay, I got everything to. So I made my first F ever in my life, my first year at Southern Miss. And guess what that class was? Art appreciation. Oh, man. Art appreciation, man. <laughs> so, you know, but they got me back in line, uh, got me back in line and, and doing the things right. So it comes up my, uh, my red shirt freshman year and, you know, TJ, all those guys, you know, move on and, and go on to the league. And uh, they like, who's gonna fill the void? And I'm like, man, Rod Davis gonna fill this void. Absolutely. And uh, you know, I went on. I, my first game was playing Tennessee. You uh, played there, so you played at Neyland Stadium. Neyland Stadium, man, 110,000. <laughs> this right off them winning the ship. Okay. It, you know, T. Martin yeah, just T. Martin, won in '99. Right. We playing him in 2000. Man, uh, I just say this. In in that tenure or the, the 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 defensive coaches, I graded out the lowest linebacker score ever for like the last ten years. Oh, wow. I played forty, I think forty three snaps. I was on the ground thirty one times. Man, and all what happened, my D line was so good in practice. 
I got away from the fundamentals mm -hmm. and I was crossing over doing all the unnecessary stuff. So I tried to do it against Tennessee. Well, they out there with Anthony Munoz and they got guys going to the league. So them linemen coming off, yeah. hit me in my Steve. mouth, man. So the next week we playing Alabama. Coach them come in and was like, hey man, uh, we're going to rotate you. Me and Chris Vaughn. It is what it is. Uh, so I never forget, I'm in my dorm room. I'm just crossing over my steps. I'm playing mad. I'm like, man, I got to get my steps right. So I'm literally playing mad, working on my steps, just not crossing over, just yeah, like, yeah. I mean, the whole day. And uh, Chris Vaughn go out there playing Alabama. He have a monster game. This son was going to have 15 tackles. So I'm like, oh, my oh, God. <sighs> so the next week, he's the star. Yeah. So he played. He started against Oklahoma State, and uh, and that's the game. I had a really good game, and I've been a star ever since. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Been a star ever since, and man, didn't turn back. Man. Uh, didn't didn't, turn, didn't back. turn back after that, man. But I had to get my priorities straight. I had to just start doing the small things, and that's what I preach to our kids, man. Don't you know what I'm saying? You want to see the uh, results and all of that, but it's a process and doing those small things right, man. And uh, after that year. You know, I got fresh and all American, one all bowl team. I mean, uh, uh, all bowl team. Game right there, we got playing in the back. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? TCU uh, getting uh, beating uh, at LT in, in that game, and man, it, it 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 was just it just just went from there. And I remember my sophomore year, we just had two years where we had a really good senior class. You know, Adele is Thomas TJ, and then the next year, Sid Scott and, and all of those, Darryl Roy Stewart. And I remember Coach Nix getting up, hey man, we need the leaders to step up. Yeah. And I was like, man, we need the leaders to step up. You know, I'm a, a yeah. sophomore, we need yeah. leaders. Hey, look at you. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, dang. You know, me and Chad was yeah. the only one returning on the yeah. defense. I'm like, oh, wow. And, uh, man, that was a burden at first and just understand it because and this was the kids i think it started that leadership you think as a leader you got to do everything right you know what i'm saying that you can't mess up and all of that stuff but leadership ain't about that it's just about being accountable and doing the right thing so man uh we didn't have a good year i mean we had a solid year that sophomore year but all i thought about is is, is being the best it's being the best i started getting i started looking at draft different stuff and then all I said, my junior year, going to my junior year, I broke my hand. I remember that when you were Yeah, I had surgery in May. So that whole summer going into my junior year, I couldn't lift weights. Ooh. No weights. So I said, man, I'm going to be in the best shape of my life. And this one, you know, uh, we just had a guy named Leroy Hand, and I took, kind of took his, his, his saying. He was always used to say, Ain't no bench press on the 50 yard line. Right, right, right. But it's, right. it's cleats and helmets. Right. So that's what I always had my mindset, man. So I used to work out three times a week. And when I said three times a day, and I said work out, like it wasn't nothing weights, but I'm working on feet, mm -hmm. jump roping. And man, uh, my junior year, it, it happened for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, Crazy. Uh, I had 170 some tackles, you know, uh, 11, 11 sacks. 20 some tackles for loss. Uh, won the Connolly Award. Yep. Was a play ball American man. It, it just it just it happened. Crazy. It just happened for me that year and, and, and stuff like that. And and man, as it happened, you know, as I look back, and this is another thing why I want to always give back. I wish somebody could have told me to calm down. Okay. You know what I'm saying? What I mean by that is hold my flowers. Yep. Yeah. I was getting too many flowers. Get too I was getting too many flowers. My head got like this, got and man. Me. And in that next year, I didn't have the same year. You know, I thought about coming out. My junior year, I was projected, you know, a late first round to a late second round. I was going to be the first one in my family to get my degree. My mom wanted me to get my degree, and I was like, man, Hattiesburg loved me, so I'm just going to stick around. Right, right. Instead of being the mid first round, I'm going to be the number one pick. Yeah. So, but I, like I said, I didn't have that same that same work ethic like I, I like I should have. I wish somebody say, "Hey man, somebody took take my flowers and, and job not done, man." And uh, but you live and learn, that's man. Listen though, that's how you can just pass it on to the players and, you coach right now. And that and that's what I try to do. Yeah. And that's what I try to do. And uh, and we'll get into the coaching thing. So right. our biggest thing 
this year, you know, we started off five and zero. Like I said, we get in, but I was like, collect your flowers, don't count. Mm. And I wish I would have collected them. I'll collect them, and you give them the flowers. Thank you, man. Um, appreciate it. But when you start counting, oh man, I'm this good. Yeah. Oh, they saying this about me. You start reading the press clippings. Yeah. And you start all that, <laughs> and then this head gets here. So. Right. But uh, but yeah. It was man, that was good though. But I remember, uh, I think the play you probably won that uh, that award for the overall best player in the state, uh, the Connolly Award. You had caught that pick against Alabama on your leg, yeah. and like I think your hamstring, a leg. <laughs> you were still trying to run that thing back if you caught it. Brian Davis with the interception. I was like, man, this is crazy. But it, it, you had a great career there. Probably like uh, all time leading tackler. You still the all time leading tackler. Yeah. What's, <clears throat> what's crazy? Uh, somebody sent me the other day. Man, I'm still top five in the whole country. That's crazy. Wow, well, it's, it's a dude I just saw, uh, he had like, uh, I was at Troy, I'm gonna say he's at Troy, he got like 600 something tackles, something, something. Yeah. So, uh, he, he's like the number all time leading tackle or whatever, but, well, if, if, if that's the, I wanna know why they haven't ride retired number 24. It's two numbers that I, that I saw play, your number, now Jerry McGrath, like, he's a great too, he yeah. went 24. So now y'all gotta put two 24s up there because yeah. he was great and then 25, Damian Fletcher. They got yeah. up retired in two numbers, man. Some kind of way, I don't know what's the, he's like, he ran over 5,000 yards at USM and then you had all those tackles, top five all time. Man, come on USM, man, y'all put that pressure on you. Y'all gotta put my boy, <laughs> put his, his number and his name gotta be on there at the, at the rock, man, so. Man, that, that. Are you lobbying for that or you just kind of let that play for itself? I, I, I let that play uh, for itself, but, uh, I won't lie, you know what I'm saying, two things that, you know, for me and then also for my, my, my kids that I, I wish happened for, for me, you know what I'm saying, just looking back and it's all honest. I hope I become a Mississippi Hall of Fame sport and a Mississippi Sports Ooh. Hall of Fame. Yeah. And uh, my number, yeah, retired at Southern Miss, yeah. man. That, that'd, that'd be awesome, man. That's got to happen. Uh, so, but, you know, that's that's out of my hands, you yeah. know. Uh, I won't put on a, a, a helmet or anything against for him to, 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 to help that cause, but you know, if it's supposed to be for me, it's gonna be for yeah, me. So that's what I know. That's Absolutely. what I know. Like, of course, uh, of course that man. But uh man, you had a great career at USM. Uh man, I'll never forget, man, you had a draft party at uh, Orange Grove Community Center. We all up there. Man, uh you didn't get your name called on that first day. Yeah. And uh how was that what was going through your head, man? Like, because you, I mean, you obviously had one of the most stellar careers ever in college football history. And not to hear your name called on the first day, what was going through your head? Man, it, it was very humbling. Uh, this, I hope this don't come off bad, but mm -hmm. it, it was, it was, uh, to be honest, one of the worst days of my life. And the reason why I say that, like, man, you got, you, 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 you fulfill a dream well in life. You set goals, you conquer goals, you make new goals. Mm -hmm. So if you were to ask the eight-year-old, you know, because the eight-year-old, you know what I'm saying, I told my mom, I said, I'm gonna make it to the NFL. Right. So if you get an eight-year-old me and say, I'm in the NFL, I'm happy. Right. But now you get a 23-year-old that all what I've done accomplished, I need to be in the top three rounds. Right. So man, it, it was humbling, man. I, I I eased out, I left early because I start, you know what I'm saying, figuring that um, that it wasn't gonna happen, man. And I remember in my hotel room, I'm bawling, crying, and I, I don't know what's going on. And the next day I, I wake up, I'm mad now. Mm -hmm. I'm mad now. And this when the draft came on the next morning, mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm going, I don't know, Coach Bauer, something must have happened. So I'm finna drive to Coach Bauer house. I ain't, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm on the road. And uh, as I'm on the road, Mike Tice called me. Mm -hmm. And he was like, uh, you ready to prove everybody wrong? And I'm like, uh, and I'm kind of dry, yes, sir. And I'm like, hold on, man, we we, we want you enthusiastic. I'm like, yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't that I was happy, I was relieved. Yeah. I was relieved, man, because I didn't, didn't really know what happened. You know, I had a good senior bowl. You know, uh, I had a solid uh, workout, so I really don't know what happened. And to each his own, but it, it goes back to, I think those, things that you carry and do upon in your life, you know what I'm saying, that you always got to do the right thing, and which, which I'm not saying I did the wrong thing, but a lot of things I think factor into that, that, you know what I'm saying, just 
it just wasn't my time. So to, to be drafted that high, um, so it was humbling. It was uh, embarrassing at the same time because, like, man, the whole gulf was there. Yeah, the it whole was all in there. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so I had a, a draft day suit on. Yo, I talked about I played some money for that son of a gun. And, uh, but I got on the road and I, and I was thrilled. I got drafted fifth round and went to Minnesota. Um, humble. And then well, when I got there, you know, I, I realized, I was like, man, okay, Randy Moss, wow. Like, that's Randy Moss right there. Yeah, you, it was you, know, it, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. wow. But then I started looking at the linebacker. I'm like, man, these guys are not, these guys are not better than me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm like, okay, I, I need to be paying. But, you know, uh, rookie, you know, I remember, um, Mike Tice, you know, that in the media one time that man, he just uh, he he went from a being a, a a big fish in a small pond, and now he's in this big city just because it was just so much going on, man. It was kind of back to my uh, freshman year, you know what I'm saying? When I wasn't, I got unfocused because instead of a red shirt, I was just a special team player, mm -hmm. and I thought I was better than that. So, you know, got distracted by a lot of the different stuff, and you know. Uh, didn't put my best foot forward and it kind of hurt. And then that, that year, the next year, you know, they traded Moss and then Mike Tyson fired. Mm. And now they got a whole new regiment and man, so it just went on from there. I tell anybody, man, I was blessed. I played three years with the Vikings, played a couple weeks with the Panthers. Mm -hmm. uh, if I would have bought into playing special teams, I, I, I should at least play seven, eight years. You know what I mean? And that's, that's one thing I look back on. I, I, that's one of the things that I regret. I'm like, man, I could have I could have played, but I, again, I thought I was better than special yeah. team. You know what I mean? Well, you're supposed to think like that, though. You know, but, you, but you're in it, you know. Mm. You ain't really thinking about that. I ain't trying to just play special team. Yeah. I want to be the player. I want to be the player, man. Yeah. I want to be a player. 500 something tigers yeah. in. So, <laughs> Come on, man. So, uh, but it's yeah. Like but, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, that's, that, that, was, that was super dope, man. Uh, now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up, man. We're gonna talk start talking about your coach career, man. How did you get into coaching? So, you know, I played uh, those years at the NFL. The next year, and I'm gonna tell you, man, my life always been humble. Mm -hmm. First time I got I got cut, or fired, whatever you want to say, from uh, football in the NFL. Arena football team called me, and uh, I was like, man. I basically, man, don't ever call my phone again. I never play for a ring of football. Click and hung up the phone. So finally I could, I go to all these workouts, I ain't getting picked up. My agent like, man, it don't look like. So now I'm calling, guess who I'm calling? Arena football. Uh -oh. Arena football. So life just humbled me mm -hmm. just to bring me back down to reality. Call, got to try out a workout, whatever it is for the Philly. So went up there, won a championship. In New Orleans. In New Orleans. Yeah. That lead folded, so now I'm out looking for another job. And so I went up to CFL for four years. And then while I'm in the CFA, I'm like, okay, my career's coming to an end. I'm, I'm starting to approach 30. Uh, what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life? Uh, so my wife asked me, could I coach her cousin basketball team, 12 year old basketball team? So I was like, man, I don't want to. All right, I do it. So, you know, I'm coaching. You know what I'm saying? Doing it's the day before the game. Man, I can't sleep. Uh-oh. Just man, man, I can't <laughs> sleep. And then the day of the game, I'm pacing my yeah. heart, fluttering in. Mind you, I haven't felt this way probably since USM. Because when I got to Minnesota, I learned quickly this is a business. Absolutely. It's a job. So it wasn't like, so I was like, man, and that's when I hit me. This is what I want to do. Yeah. This is the feeling that I've been missing for 10 years yeah. that I ain't had since I was at USM. That just nervous feeling. So, man, I started going back, uh, going back to school, getting my teacher's license, uh, did that, uh, got on that. Uh, and then again, you know, uh, humble pie, failure. Uh, so I'm coaching at Northwest Ranking. I'm here to coaching, but I'm not a teacher yet. I got to still take past the, uh, the history test. Take the test, fail it. I'm devastated. I ain't. Coach said, we still got time. It ain't, it ain't just school, we still got time. Boom, take the test again, fail it again. Second time, I'm like, oh, yeah. goodness. <laughs> All right, still got time, Rod. Take it a third time, 
failing again. And at this time, man, I'm, I'm the, I mean, how I told you how I work out, I'm all in to just what's the name. So now it's too late. So they're like, bro, we gotta go on with this other guy. So I started working at, uh, took a job at FedEx. Uh, then in September, boom, boom, took it again. Fourth time, I finally passed it. Yeah. Other than my kids being born, I'm gonna take that out. And me marrying my wife, that was the best day of my life. Absolutely. Because man, everything I that, man. accomplished, I poured everything into that man. And when I did it, so I couldn't get on because the school, football season already started. So that next year, I, I came on to Northwest. I was at Northwest for four years. Um, you know, uh, then the opportunity at, at Florence, you know, came up and. You know, I took the head coaching job there, and there, I've been there four years. You know, when I say when I say it was rough, man, mm -hmm. uh, beginning because I didn't know this until I got there. Florence, uh, you know, Florence is a, a, a ninety percent white school. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't know that before I got there. And you know, there's a lot of little trauma all about. You know, you know, everybody when you make a hire, it's all the people. You know what I'm saying? Getting it. So I got it over, you know, a couple other guys that other people kind of wanted, and but I was thankful, man. So it, it, it was tough. Yeah. Admin has been nothing but great to me, and the support that my supporters they gave me, they got me through. They moved our butt up to 5A last yeah. year and put us in the toughest district in the state. <laughs> you know, we won one freaking game. Yeah. Uh, and then this year, man, at, at, at uh, one time we was five and zero, oh, and uh, ranked in the, in the in top of the state, and uh, we ended the season out seven and four. Had a great had a great yeah, bunch of kids and, and, and stuff like that. So man, it, it's been a blessing. But you know, my biggest thing that I get out is man, uh, uh, be humble, collect your flowers, don't start counting. I like you know what I mean. And, and the two C's that I tell my players when. Uh, that, that you don't need to be until you retire. Uh, is uh I my mind that went blank. Complacent. Uh my mind that went blank <laughs> over there. But uh but just continue to push forward, man, and, and just know that life's gonna give you ups and downs and how everybody look, you know, you probably like, man, wrong, man, it, it's been a great life, man. It, it's been a it's been a lot of, it's been a lot of ups, yeah. but it's been a whole lot of valleys, man. And through those valleys, I, it taught me great lessons, uh, just to, just to endure and, and, and just, you know, keep fighting, man. Keep fighting. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm glad you had took the time today, man. Got to my boy, shout out to Cuz, Carlos Liggins, man, Lopes, man. He was definitely somebody that impacted my life as well. Y'all, y'all grew up together. And man, don't let this be your last time, man. Coming, man. Uh, Come on, Smack on World, man. I, I I really appreciate you coming, right, man. You don't, you don't know, man. This this one, I was really looking forward to this. Man. I appreciate just, it. You know, you're a big brother to me, so it's always a pleasure to talk to you, man. And next year, we, you know, we're going we gonna to increase the wins probably 10 games now, man. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Put the pressure on, yeah. baby. Let's go get it. Let's man. go get it. We're going to sign off, man. We got Mr. The legendary, man. USM Tires Jersey, man. 24 got to get, get in the Raptors, whatever y'all want to call it, man. But, Shabazz McClellan, man, I'm signing off, Smackin' Real. See you next time. Yeah, Chico, suck and set up that guy. Yeah, Chico. Yeah, Chico, suck and set up that guy. Tooth picking your eye. I'm that guy. Hey, y'all. Something happened to me, something happened to you, okay?